Animation modifiers in Blender are really awesome and they're actually something that's not even available to us in similar animation programs like Maya. Just like mesh modifiers in Blender non-destructively modify meshes, animation modifiers in Blender non-destructively modify animation curves. They're an extremely powerful, totally non-destructive tool that let us add instant dynamic effects to our animations. This video also marks the last touching point on the graph editor, so we're gonna cover the remainder of everything you need to know to quickly and proficiently animate using it. But without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm going to very quickly go to our animation workspace here, insert a keyframe by pressing I, go over to frame 50 here, actually turn on auto key, insert, location, rotation, and scale, then I'm gonna move my cube by pressing G, Y, left click to confirm. And if I'm moving way too fast for you, please, please watch the previous videos where we go into everything I just did in way more depth. So I'm gonna also scale my cube, rotate my cube like so, and that's pretty good. So now I'm gonna actually wanna set my play range to frame one through 50. So I'm gonna press P for play range, hold left click, and drag a box selection from frame 50 to frame one. Again, that's too fast for you. Please, please watch the previous videos. We go into this in a lot more depth. So yeah, now this is the dope sheet, not the graph editor, but again, we can instantly switch to the graph editor using control plus tab. And I just noticed my screencast keys are not working. There we go, awesome. So one more thing that I wanna touch on before we get into modifiers here is this button right here, which is normalize. Normalize essentially normalizes the display of all of our curves in the graph editor to make them a little bit more even. So if I click this button and kind of zoom out here, you can kind of see what it's doing where it's kind of normalizing the values of all of our keyframes in a way that can sometimes make it easier when you're editing multiple channels at once. So if I expand our cube here, click on rotation, Shift H to hide all of our channels that are not rotation. And again, I just hold, held left click there, do a box selection, just like we did for the preview range. So if I press home to kind of frame our view here and turn normalize on and off, you're gonna see what's happening here. It really just kind of makes the previewing of multiple channels at once easier sometimes. Honestly, I kind of just click this button at random to see if it looks better or worse than what I was previously looking at when I was editing multiple curves in the graph editor. It's kind of just something you can go by vibe and be like, oh, this is kind of hard to read. Let's turn this on to see if this is any better. So if I click home here again, you can see that this is what it looks like without normalize. And this is what it looks like with normalize. It really just depends on your scene and what kind of project you're working on at any given time. So I would just play with this option to see uh, whatever looks better and more easier to understand to you. But yeah, back to the point of the video. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about modifiers. So just like we can go into 3D viewport and press N to get this little side menu right here, we can also do that in the graph editor. So if we're moused over the graph editor and we press N, we get this little menu on the side. But to actually add a modifier here, we have to click on a channel. So now by clicking on that channel, we can now see this tab right here called modifiers. This is where we add modifiers to our animation. And for our purposes here, I'm actually gonna click on Y location, press shift plus H to hide every animation channel except Y location, then press home on my keyboard to kind of frame our curves like so. Now I'm gonna click on add a modifier and we're gonna see a bunch of options here. But honestly, we only care about three of these options. That being stepped interpolation, cycles, and noise. Let's start with stepped interpolation. Now if we press spacebar here, we're actually gonna see a lot of stuff happening because we animated our cube not only moving but also rotating and scaling. So to make it a little bit more obvious what's actually happening here, I'm actually gonna press the checkbox next to rotation and scale. Unchecking those boxes, we're basically disabling the animation on those channels. Uh, so if we click them again, they're gonna come right back to us. But if we hold left click and turn all of those channels off, we're able to kind of instantly preview what our animation looks like without them, which is really helpful. So I'm gonna play back our animation like so. And as we can see, our animation looks a little bit different now. So if we pause our animation and frame by frame through it using the left and right arrow keys on our keyboard, 
you're gonna see something interesting happen. Our cube is only updating every other frame. This is what's called being on twos in 2D animation, which means that you're only getting a new frame every other frame. You can control this, however, by changing the step size value on our modifier. So if we left click this and type in three, then hit enter, now our animation is only gonna be updating every third frame. So if we play back our animation, it's gonna look even chunkier. This is really useful for stop motion animation styles, spider verse animation styles, Puss in Boots The Last Wish animation styles. Like this is a really amazing tool that's a Blender exclusive because for most other animation software, you're gonna have to actually bake down your animation to get it to preview to look like this if it's already smooth and splined out. But with Blender, I can press this checkbox right here and we're instantly back to our original animation. So this change is completely non-destructive, which is really, really, really useful and one of the coolest parts of animating in Blender. But there's more really useful options directly below this, that being start frame and end frame. If we click on end frame, that will actually set our end frame to zero, which basically turns off our animation. But for example, if I set my end frame to 25 here, as we can see in our graph editor and the 3D viewport by just looking at the animation, our animation becomes really smooth after frame 25. That's because the modifier is completely turning off after frame 25 because that's what we've set our end frame for this modifier to be. We can also change the start frame on our modifier to let's say, just drag it up to frame 10. Now we can see that our animation starts smooth, gets real blocky and gets smooth again. And there's even an influence slider, which is awesome. This is basically like if you've ever used Clip Studio Paint or Photoshop or any program like that, this is basically an opacity slider. So if I drag this up and down, we can look at the curves in our graph editor here to see that it's basically just changing the overall influence of our modifier in general, which is so awesome and really, really useful. And there's even one more really useful thing under this restrict frame range button. So if we click this, we actually expand it. Then by enabling it, there's these two super useful options right here called blend in and blend out. And I'm actually gonna make my start frame a little later in the animation to make this a little clearer what's actually happening here. By dragging up the value of our blend in here, we're actually smoothly transitioning into this modifier. And by dragging this blend out, we're smoothly transitioning into the end of our modifier. That being the start frame and the end frame that we just set previously. And again, this is the stepped animation modifier but all of these options also apply to every other animation modifier in Blender. So you can do this with a noise modifier, and I believe you can even do this with a cycles modifier. So really, really powerful stuff. But speaking of a noise modifier, let's check that out. So to disable this modifier, I can press this checkbox to just disable it. So basically the modifier is still there, but we don't see what it's doing and it's not gonna like show up in our animation. But if we want to just completely remove a modifier in Blender, you have to press this checkbox right here. So that just totally removes the modifier. Now let's click on add modifier and go to noise. So if we click on noise, we're going to see that the movement of our cube becomes really stuttery and blocky. This is a super powerful modifier if you want to do something like camera shake, or maybe you have like a first person reload animation where you kind of like, want the hands to have like a natural like jitter to them that makes your animation feel a little bit more gritty and realistic. This modifier is the way to go and it's super useful for that kind of stuff. There's also a bunch of settings with it. For example, the scale kind of just changes the overall scale of the noise. So this is like really fine grained noise right here. But if we drag that up, it becomes a little bit more smooth and subtle. Um, the strength changes like how the influence or how strong overall the noise is. So if we drag this up, it's really wild and crazy, as you can see there. If we drag this down, it becomes a lot more subtle uh, of a jitter. You can also change this offset here, which kind of smoothly changes uh, the offset of your noise. And you can also do phase here, which just changes the overall phase of your noise. These are a little bit more niche and less useful than scale and strength. You're probably just gonna be messing with scale and strength the most, honestly. Um, and again, just like every other value in Blender, you can press backspace while you're mouse over it to reset it to the default value. There's also depth here, but honestly, 
I'm not entirely sure what's happening here and it's not super useful. <laughs> so I just usually leave that at default. And again, we have an influence slider right here so we can drag that up and down to change the overall opacity of our noise, if you wanna call it that. And just like with stepped animation, we can restrict the frame range. So let's say that it'll start on frame four and stop on frame 40. Now we can see our, we got a little bit of jitter starting on frame four and it completely stops on frame 40. But say we wanted to smoothly transition in and out of this jitter, that's no problem. You can just drag this blend in just slowly, smoothly transition into the noise, and you can use this blend out to slowly transition out of the noise. So maybe you have like a car and it's going over like rough gravel, but then it goes onto a smooth road. That's the kind of use for this modifier. But let's X out of this modifier and talk about the last modifier I wanted to touch on today, which is cycles. So this is gonna look a little weird if we just click on that um, because we're already looping our animation, um, but, Let's stop looping our animation and see what happens without this modifier. So I'm gonna click on this button right here to turn off our preview range. I'm gonna press home to kind of frame our curves here. Then I wanna play back our animation and we're gonna see what happens when we just play back our animation right now. So normally when we play back our animation, it goes from frame zero to frame 50, uh, starts and stops slowly and then it ends. But by enabling cycles, this makes our animation loop. So the moment we hit frame 50, it instantly teleports back to the keyframe on frame zero, and it has a perfectly looping animation. Um, so for something like this, it's a little bit weird to look at. The curves look super odd. So let's actually make our animation loop by just left clicking on our first keyframe here, going to frame 55, then control V to paste. So all I did there was left click on this first keyframe, press control plus V, then I press Control plus C to paste that keyframe. Now I'm gonna press A to select all my keyframes. Then I press V to go to automatic. So we'll have like a really smooth motion here just for fun. We don't need to do that. Um, then I'm gonna go to frame one. I'm gonna see what's happening here. We have a perfectly infinitely looping animation that goes on like forever. We can keep scrolling forward here to frame like 2000 plus and it's still going to be happening in that point in the future. Now this might look really weird, but this is an extremely, extremely useful modifier in Blender. Every time you wanna do something like a walk or a character run or a character just, you know, just like breathing in space, being neutral, um, this is the modifier you wanna use. For any type of looping animation, this is an invaluable, invaluable modifier. In fact, this modifier is so useful, there's actually another hotkey shortcut to access it. So if I select all of my keyframes here by pressing A, then I press Shift plus E, there's two options right here, Make Cyclic and Clear Cyclic. This is just a faster way of doing what we just did. So if I hit Clear Cyclic on this modifier and click on our Y location again, the modifier is no longer there. And if I press Shift plus E and do Make Cyclic, you're gonna see our modifier come right back once again. And just like with keyframes, you can copy and paste modifiers as well. So if I pause my animation and press this button right here called Copy F Modifiers, that's gonna copy every single modifier I have on this animation channel. So if I press Alt plus H here and then re-enable these animation channels by holding left click and getting all these checked once more, then I pressed A to select all of my animation channels. Then I pressed paste right here. So this is how you copy animation modifiers and this is how you paste them. Now when we play back our animation, every single channel is looping because we have that cycles modifier on every channel. So if we click on Z location, it's got cycles. If we click on X rotation, it's got cycles because we selected all of them and pasted that cycles modifier onto them. But again, you can do the exact same thing by pressing A, to select all of your channels, then going Shift plus E, make cyclic. But we can also remove all those cycling modifiers by pressing Clear Cyclic after we do Shift plus E. So now if we do that, we have no cycling. And if we do it again, Shift plus E, make cyclic, we are cycling once again. I'm gonna undo that by pressing Control plus E though. And there's actually a shortcut to do all of this. So if we double click on Y location, for example, and then do Control Shift M, this brings up the Add F Curve Modifier menu, which is the exact same thing as this menu on the right. It's just a faster way of doing it via a hotkey. So if I add our 
let's say, stepped interpolation modifier here, it just makes a modifier on this channel specifically because that's what we had selected. Just a little bit of a faster way of doing what we just did. And again, because this is just a modifier and we're non-destructively editing our animation, we can change our animation and the modifier will essentially follow the curve non-destructively. So if I click on this last frame here and then press G, then X, and move this way forward so our animation's a lot slower, and then go to frame one to play this back, our modifier has just adjusted in real time to compensate. So if we look at our curves here, then press G and X, you're gonna see that no matter how much we move our curves or modify this animation, our modifier is going to adjust in real time to compensate because it's a non-destructive modifier on top of existing animation that you splined out. So that is why this is so exciting and powerful of a feature in Blender. The last thing I wanted to briefly touch on are dynamic effects. So to do that, I'm gonna click on my Y location here, then I'm gonna press Shift plus H and get rid of this stepped modifier and zoom out a bit. Then I'm gonna press A to select all of my curves and press T. So T is where we actually changed our interpolation modes in the last video. So that's where you change from constant to linear to Bezier. But I wanted to briefly touch on dynamic effects, which are these three on the right here, which are back, bounce, and elastic. Personally, I do not use these, but they're really cool and a really fast way of instantly getting a, unsurprisingly, dynamic effect onto your animations. So for example, if I go to this elastic option, and then play back my animation, my cube essentially bounces back and forth and it has this like springy buoyancy effect every time it gets to a new point in space. And if I press T here once again and do bounce, this is actually gonna move like a bouncing ball. So if I go to frame zero, it's gonna like hit against an object and bounce next to it in a really perfectly like mathematically correct way. Um, so if you really quickly need something to bounce against an object, like a ball or whatever it might be, this is a really fast way of doing it. But that wraps up the graph editor. That is basically everything you need to know about using the graph editor in Blender. And in the next video, we're finally gonna talk about importing and animating our own characters in Blender, which is really, really exciting. So be sure to be subscribed so you don't miss that video. And check out my Patreon if you wanna get access to our exclusive Discord community and a whole lot more. So thank you for watching. Congratulations on finishing this tutorial. It might feel like a small step, but you're now one step closer to animation mastery. And if you want access to an exclusive Discord community, exclusive rewards, and help ensure that I can keep making tutorials for you just like this one, check out my Patreon. Link is in the description below.